Hi everyone. Hi everyone. And welcome to the Engine Room with me, Brian. Yeah, and me, Julius. <laughs> yeah. So, we're, where are we? Well, this is another uh, part of this new uh, office that we're moving to yeah. in, a, in a couple of, uh, couple of months. Yeah. It's got a nice grey finish. It does. It has like still has the sort of holes in the walls and stuff. Yeah, so it's, they're, it's beautiful. It come in, it's got to be fixed, right? Yeah. Well, today we want to talk about that we fucking finally w w went and won the Nordic Game Award for best handheld or small screen game, right? That's like the biggest prize as, as far as we care. As right? far as we care, it's the best <laughs> because it means that we won the handheld category and it the Nordic region is, you could totally say that it's a world leader in game development these days. It really is. Yeah, so like, we're, we're very proud. I mean, uh, like the getting it is like, you, we're beating a lot of really good peers to get okay. this prize. So we, we won a prize, but yeah. why does it matter well, it to matters, people watching? It matters very much because we've coveted this prize for um, since 2011. We've been waiting to win this. We've been okay. nominated for Antil, for Steamworld Dig, for Steamworld Heist, and now finally we won it for Steamworld uh, Dig yeah. too. We'll show a picture of the award here. Yes, right? yeah. So, yeah. So, but, okay, so the Nordics, for people who don't know, yeah. are the countries like of Northern Europe. Of right? course. That's Which ones? Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Finland? Yes. Iceland? And Iceland. Yes. So it's those five, right? I don't know about the Faroe Islands, if they're their own country or, or something, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. No, it's those five. It's like Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Finland, Iceland. And the reason why we're so good at making games in the Nordic region is because of the weather. I mean, you can just... Here, look at the weather. Yeah. It's... Um, <laughs> It's something. Yeah, it's, it's always like this, or very often like this. The yeah. weather sucks, so we stay indoors making games. Everyone does that. Um, very many people do that. I mean, like, also, it's it's like we the sun shines so rarely that we actually stay indoors for long So we create of our own suns, our own worlds. That's right. Where That's the right. weather is always nice. <laughs> there's always exactly. a sun in Steam World. Yes, right? yeah, oh, of course. Right. Unless they're in space. But there's a sun yeah, there the, somewhere too. The right? sun is in space in Steam World Heist. So yeah. it's, um, yeah, I would say like the climate is really good. And also, I mean, the population is, um, the Nordic region was just very early computerized. And uh, yeah. internet ties. If we had really good internet connections very early, we still have very good. Like, yeah, it's really compared solid. to the U.S. Yeah, and yeah, other countries. It's yeah, really good. I remember. You know, I lived in in the U.S. for two years. Yeah, and the, the I mean, people were happy with really slow internet yeah. connections over there, and um, yeah, it's. I think they've caught up now, but we have we really have a head start, and that's yeah, that's why I think a lot of. A lot of kids, like uh, when we started getting personal computers into the homes, uh, played games, but also started experimenting with making, making games, games yeah. and learning how to code and make computer graphics and stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. I yeah, mean, okay. I, I remember when I got my first computer, I was I was just constantly making graphics. I was Did it just, have a screen? It had a screen. Well, okay, the first computer I bought for myself. <laughs> I, I see where you're going it. with this. <laughs> it's. The first computer I bought for myself was a, an Apple Quadra, uh, a Macintosh Quadra. Or a, but I, that had a screen, right? The Macintosh had a screen. Well, yes. Well, okay, the very first computer I bought for myself was one of those. Uh, yeah, we've got to show a picture here. It's yeah. uh, it's this uh, Apple 128K, or yeah. maybe I had a 512K. Yeah. You know, the, the box with, with the built-in screen. But, uh, but I listen. Yeah, all right. Well, you could use it for next to nothing. It was like a word processor, right? Okay. Yeah. But then I, I bought like a Quadra 700, and it was massively powerful. Probably like 1% of the, the computer that I'm... of the processing power of the computer I use today. Is it even 1%? Um, it was really slow, let's okay. put it that way, because... Even for the time? Yeah, for the time it was super fast. It okay. was wicked fast, I think. But you could do nothing on it today. Um, today you wouldn't use it, because you could use it as a doorstop or something like that. <laughs> okay. but, but at that time it was... I would spend, I would get commissioned to make like a poster for for a, for a client yeah. and like applying one filter in Photoshop on like one poster size yeah. thing is 
I would set it to to start processing, and then I would go to sleep. I would set the the alarm <laughs> for like three or four hours later, and then it would be done. And then I'd get get up, and if the I mean, it might as well. Sometimes it was just that the results were not what I was looking for, yeah. or I did the setting wrong, and and you had to had, had to, to do, do it, it again. Yeah, yeah. And when to, was this? Ninety. Uh, this is ninety. Um, ninety. I think 92 93 maybe okay or maybe 90 yeah I'd say 1992 1993 yeah when I was one year one year yeah when you're born in 1992 92 right yeah. yeah so it was a different time I mean like today if you process something in Photoshop you don't even get the bar you know it's no, like you don't yeah. it's instant <laughs> it's instant and at that time it was like you really had to before you went to bed like mm. for those three or four hours you'd sort of look for the bar is like is it moving or has the computer hung again right <laughs> have you has it yeah did you break it <laughs> but this is like this is a good segue into like because the Nor Nordic Game Award is huge yeah for you especially yes for me it's, uh, it's huge for image reform in general but for you yes it's, personally it's, it's he huge. brags about it everywhere all the time yeah and it, it, like for everyone else it's like yeah so what they picked up an award for a very good game right? yeah it's, it, like, it's one of many awards actually we're yeah. blessed in that way yes right but this one the g winning at Nordic game was was especially huge for me and yeah. I'll tell you why I mean yeah maybe we should like start from the beginning so we, oh the very yeah. beginning okay or, yeah should I, like, all right why, you know we've, we've talked about the 90s let's move to like yeah okay because I got a few questions um, a few emails mm -hmm. uh, I think one or two days ago right asking about like what did you even make before oh man before Antil and Simul Tower Defense because oh, okay. Image Form was founded in 97 yeah uh, and it's gone through several stages so like Let's just walk through them one by one. Sure, excellent. Okay, so 1997. Yeah. Boom. Boom. <laughs> it's, uh, I was five years old. You were, you five were years like old. what, 50? I was like uh, 55 years old, yeah. Yeah. No, I was in, so 97, I was, I turned 30 in 1997. Okay. So, uh, um, started Imogen for one month before I turned 30 so I felt really young right it yeah. was gonna last longer that way oh, yeah. and at that time I mean you got to put it put it in perspective 1997 the internet is still sort of is it, it gonna be a thing or yeah exactly I mean pe like it was after 97 that you had this like members of the Swedish government were talking about like internet being oh, like a fad that it was gonna yeah. pass like a minister that very soon after that got fired and then <laughs> <laughs> for that one comment I think. Oh, for you. And uh, um, in 1997 PowerPoint came, like the first real iteration of, of the real first working version of of uh, Microsoft PowerPoint came in 1997. Okay. That's a good And that was your break. No, it wasn't. It was my big competitor because I was oh. working in uh, in, uh, in Macromedia Director at that time. Mm -hmm. And Director was this tool where you made it was like a multimedia tool. You could oh, take I haven't like, heard that word in a while. <laughs> it was it was the shit, believe me. Like in in the 90s multimedia was it was like a buzzword that just kept on be becoming an old buzzword after a while. Okay. Right? So I started in 1997 and then what we did in the beginning was multimedia presentations, sort of game... Like, po like PowerPoints? Um, we could make that, but typically it was more interactive. Like you would interact okay. with objects and stuff and uh, you could show like um, like one one assignment was for like a, a client that made motors. And you could like take the motor apart and show like the, oh, the moving parts. Okay. So and it's kind of like some high high level keynote or something. Yeah, you could yeah, you could do that. Yeah, you could call it that. It was it was definitely very scriptable. It was the yeah. predecessor uh, of uh, of uh, Flash. Uh, oh, I mean, okay, yeah. So Macromedia made Director. It was the flagship and then they came out with Macromedia Flash after that and it became really huge for making that, websites. Is that like the old Adobe? It's or? Adobe actually bought Flash from Macromedia. Oh, okay. So Macromedia Flash became Adobe Flash, uh, and Adobe Flash became Adobe Animate. Recently, right? uh, maybe I'm not sure. Actually, yeah, I, I think it. they renamed the yeah. Yeah. Okay. So like, we were making game-ish things in uh, in yeah. Macromedia okay. Director at that time, and 
so in 97 we did that and then we did graphic design for us for some clients that wanted yeah. us to make you know like company logos and uh, design uh, flyers air flyers you know just ads uh, stuff like that yeah so it was just yeah like and this is when image Fo and form got it got its current name as well that's right, right yeah so image and form is a, it's a shitty name it's the shittiest yeah. name for a game studio <laughs> really it is right but but for like a multimedia studio in I, the 90s it was probably okay it, it was okay but it was it was still shitty <laughs> i mean did you have any alternatives yes i mean so any I, fun ones? yeah i started it with my with my ex-wife she was a graphic designer and i was a programmer and graphic designer and so she wanted us to be called monkey business Oh, that's a really good name. I thought it was a, these days. I think it's like, God damn it! Why aren't why aren't we called Monkey, Monkey Business? That would be awesome. Yeah. But I I felt like I was worried that it was going to sound like unprofessional. Yeah, unprofessional. Uh. So I wanted it to be to be called Imagination, like Image Nation, like Imagination, Image Nation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's like kind of hard to like. What do you say? Do you say Imagination or do you say Image Imagination? Right. Yeah. Like, it was that was shittier, but I was yeah. really a staunch supporter of that. So, uh, and then a friend of ours said, "It's like they're both really unprofessional. Like, why don't you call yourself? Like, you work with images, you work with graphic design, and uh, I mean, in Swedish, design is formgivning, so image and form, image and form. Yeah. But in English, it, it sucks, right? It's like yeah. it's an image, and then there's like a boring form to fill out. Yeah. <laughs> So, so yeah, it stuck with us, and we said, like, I'm just gonna flip forward a little bit here. Like yeah. in 2012, we said that okay, before June 30th, 2012, we will have to have renamed this company because we are now sort of on the path to just making that our own games with Steamroll Dig at the time. Right? Yeah, so Steamroll Dig came out in 2013, right? And yeah. it's like 2012, we're like, okay, we're we're on this path now of making our own games. We have to rename this company. Yeah. It can't be called Image and Form anymore. It's too dumb. Why is it still called Image and Form? Because <laughs> all the, all the alternatives that came up were even dumber. It's like, or I felt so. It's like, like you had some really good ones. Oh yeah, Iron Hat is the one that I remember. I, uh, Do you remember Other Ship? Like, Other Ship, really? Other, yeah. Better than Image and Form? Yeah. Anything's better than Image and <laughs> yeah, Form. Yeah, anything's better. Actually, in or hindsight. Even Brian makes games or something. <laughs> it could be called anything, but image and form, yeah, it still sucks. But it, it's unique, right? Yeah, it's uniquely bad, so it's sort of unique. Let's put yeah. it that way. So I'm going to go back then. Yeah. So okay. 90, 97, 97, right? 97. Multimedia. Multimedia, graphic design, uh, programming on the side, sort of. Yeah. And uh, above all, not saying no to anything. It's like, you did everything. Yeah, just said yes to everything. It's like, can you do this? Yes. Can you can you like do the, make this Excel uh, macro? It's like yes. Yeah. Just so afraid of saying no to any business, right? But that must have been a great learning experience, right? Yeah, totally. It's like uh, I got to apply everything that that yeah. we had learned. Did you do web design as well? Yeah. Well, web design came like. We started the company and then like a half a year later, like the yeah. web sort of really took off in Sweden, yeah. 97, 98. So we uh, kind of instantly moved into web design. That was okay. uh, So web design was the... Did you know what you were doing? Mm, I think we knew just as much as everyone else. Oh, no which, one knew what they were doing. There was next to nothing. Yeah, it was... Um, so you're, you're kind of an internet pioneer. <laughs> that's that's very flattering like yeah. it's called an, an internet idiot let's put it that way <laughs> instead like well, there were so many companies starting at that time yeah. and nobody really knew what the web was how it was going to to function and so on I mean yeah. to today we have like web applications that we we wouldn't function without them right yeah and like banking on internet was really in its infancy it was really shitty it's yeah. like it was really poor but it was it was it was a, a it was a giant leap, you know. Yeah. I mean, starting image and form, I was sitting with these pads or like, uh, what do you call it? Like um, stamps. Yeah. Um, um. Stamps as well. Yeah, yeah, like physical stamps. But like when you when you uh, needed to pay salaries to someone, you had yeah. to like fill out like a. You, you had to do it by hand. Fill out yeah. these like when you when you applied for a bank account, payment you would forms. get these yeah payment forms and like slips. Yeah. That's yeah. the word for it. Yeah. yeah. Took for it like took like a 
could take like two or three days to like pay all the bills and pay all the salaries and stuff. It was so the internet has really come a long way. Digital is nice. Yeah, digital is very okay, nice. But um, so websites, right? Websites. Yeah, and for some reason we sort of uh, we got a lot of assignments from big pharmaceutical companies. Okay. Like, I guess we made like one or two sites for uh, for for a pharmaceutical company, yeah. and then we sort of. And your name is like very. Yeah. Sort of Ster <laughs> sterile, 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 <laughs> sterile. I, I don't know. How do you pronounce it? Sterile, I think. Sterile. Yeah. Yeah. yeah boring. Yeah. Really boring. So it's suited. clean cut. Yeah. Clean, boring, sort of corporate. So was your logo like? It was. Um, was yeah. it pharmaceutical like? No, it was. Septic. Yeah. It 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 looked really. Um, we were very afraid of like. Uh, standing out or, or sticking yeah. out so it was very bland and and uh, so um, so we made that for a few years and then like when 9-11 hit we yeah. thought it was gonna we we thought it was terrible but we didn't we didn't see that it would affect our business in any way no because I, you were in Sweden that's right I mean yeah. like and so far removed and you know we had Swedish clients like Volvo um, like oh. Swedish pharmaceutical companies some international ones, but but we didn't see, we didn't foresee what was going to happen. Like within okay. within a week after 9/11, we got emails um, from all of our uh, clients, yeah. the, the big clients, yeah. saying that due to the uh, global unrest right now, we we have to uh, sort of put all our um, consultant projects on ice. Sort okay. of have to shelve them for a while yeah. until we know what's going to happen. Yeah. And it basically like there was there was like three or four months when we were making zero we had zero income. Oh shit! And at that time, Image and Form was seven or eight people working with web design. Yeah. Like for a, a fixed number of clients. Yeah. It was we really didn't have a contingency plan for oh, what shit. is going to happen if all our business stops on the same day, and that's what happened. So we actually we. What I, we sort of said, okay, we're going to stick it out. This is going to blow over. Yeah. And after three months of no new business, yeah, we realized that if we don't just uh, pull the handbrake right now, uh, Image of Form is going to go bankrupt. Yeah. So we had to let everyone go except for me and uh, and uh, my ex-wife, who I started Image of Form yeah. with. The two of us. And this uh, was in. 2001. This is two, 2001, uh, just at around the end of 2001. Yeah. yeah. And so everyone had to go. There was the two of us. We paid all the salaries uh, just properly. And when we'd paid the last salary, uh, we had 2,000 Swedish crowns, which is around 250 American bucks left on the credit at, on the bank. So we owed oh. the we yeah we were in the hole as well right but we had if we had gone if we had had costs expenses of like more than 250 more dollars yeah we would have been declared bankrupt because we wouldn't have coverage uh, for the uh, um yeah we wouldn't have money to back up the, the anything uh, anything right exactly yeah that's how it works in sweden like if you're if you're a hundred thousand if you can't cover up like the the money that you paid for the stocks initially, yeah, um, um, because Image Form is a limited liability company, right? Yeah. So uh, then you're actually declared bankrupt. Automatically, so we, kind of automatically, yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, you could go and ask a, a rich uncle or something to lend you money. <laughs> yeah, but mm, if you have a rich if uncle, you, if you and have, he's nice, or like a poor uncle who has two hundred fifty bucks, right? But it oh, was yeah. Um, so. Yeah, we were actually. It was. To, to buy the stocks, I think we paid something like $15,000 yeah. like, um, to set up the limited liability company. Okay. And so we, so we were $14,750 in the hole, right? We, okay. In yeah. the red. And we had no Current dollars or... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of trying to do this on the fly. So yeah, current okay. dollars, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, okay. But? But you dug yourselves out. We dug ourselves out, yeah. It but, was... Uh, but not for another, like, what? <laughs> Not 13 years 12 years 12 yeah. years <laughs> and then the real digging started right yeah but uh, okay but 
Yes. Yeah, so what happened after this? Yeah. Ap- after that, I was you lucky to business. Yeah, I was lucky to land a few sort of consultants. Uh, um, clients, mm. so I sat doing really, really in, immensely boring documentation work for another pharmaceutical company <laughs> for two years, so, yep. and sort of, and then that paid really well, so okay. that was fine. But then, uh, while that happened, like sometime in 2002, mm-hmm. like a Norwegian publisher, uh, a games publisher, yeah, a gaming publisher that made kids' games or edutainment titles, yeah, they reached out to me. I knew one of the the ladies working there okay. and she knew that I programmed in uh, in what was then Adobe Director. Okay. And n- not m- not many real programmers were using uh, uh, Director. But was, you were. I was, yeah, I still had <laughs> It was if there is an obsolete skill, like you can rest assured that I I possess <laughs> it. <laughs> you made all the wrong decisions. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it turned out it was right. It was quite it a was right. Project. Yeah, it was quite good. So it's like, so they asked us to to save a, a capsized game, a kids game. Like the developer oh, yeah. had gone bust, and they yeah. they had a game that was almost finished, and they just needed a, a few finishing touches to it. Was so, this the first Josephine game? You yeah, on? that's right. So that was Josephine. Josephine, <laughs> your biggest like commitment gaming-wise today, right? Yeah. In terms of time. Oh, in terms of, in terms. Or maybe of, not. Maybe not these days, right? But it yeah. almost SteamWorld is surpassing it. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, we made Josephine games, these entertainment titles that were really quite simple. Yeah. Uh, for. Um, between 2002 and 2009. For that the was Nordic market. For the Nordic market, for only for Norway and Sweden, basically. Did you get nominated for the Nordic Game Award? We actually, not for the Nordic Game Award, because it didn't exist really at that time, yeah. but we, we won um, uh, an award at Dataspils Gala, which was the equivalent at that time yeah, of the, the Stockholm. Computer Games Gala. Yeah, yeah, the Computer Game Award Show. Yeah. And so it won Best Kids Game. Oh, it did? Yeah. Uh, one of the titles, because we actually made close to 30 kids games, like yeah. uh, CD-ROM sure, games, right? I'm not sure Image Phone will ever, like, top that figure with... No, we're, I doubt that we're going to make 30 SteamWorld games, right? Yeah. Like, Well, okay, like, fast forward 10 years and here yeah. we are, right? <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, uh, but that's cool. So you worked on Josephine for, like, how many years? It was like, so from 2002 until 2009, that's when we made the last Josephine game. Okay. And uh, it was, um, it, the pace really picked up in 2007. Okay. Um, so we had a collaboration then with, uh, uh, the, it, like the publishing was taken over by a Danish publisher. Okay. Who really just sort of... Will go uh, unnamed. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> fine. And, and they, they yeah. actually put us... Um, they they just demanded that we make uh, titles faster so we made oh in in those last years between 2007 and 2009 i think we made a crazy amount of josephine titles like 20 titles or something was it like fun that. it was it was fun in the beginning because it was really lucrative like yeah. on our scale and it meant yeah. that it was a nice setup because i needed to haggle about the uh, the budget once a year, yeah. like uh, in November, December, me and the head of the the publishing company, we would sit down and uh, have a rough discussion of uh, about how much we would get paid to make yeah. X titles next year. Okay, and then we arrived at a figure, and then we made these games, and we got paid, and it was. I mean, compare that to be chasing uh, new assignments all the time. Yeah, right? a dream come true. Right? Yeah, it was really comfortable, yeah. but. Creatively, it was suicide, right? I soul mean, crushing. Yeah, it was soul crushing because we had, like, with the websites, with the graphic design, with the multimedia, we had always sort of made it up ourselves. Yeah. This was sort of you're going to make a game that is this is going to contain this. Uh, the kids will need to learn this from this title. Yeah. Did and you it work was, with teachers and stuff like um, that. We didn't directly. We had teachers talk to us yeah. at at given for some of these uh, uh, um, for some of these games yeah. but the publisher had like a, a, an established relation okay. with with like a Danish um, teacher association okay cool so I think those games were actually legit like if you played them chances were that you were actually gonna learn something yeah but uh, but like 
um, there somewhere there, like in 2008, 2009, we were really on our knees uh, creatively because it was yeah. we were just doing work for hire. Yeah. Uh, but then, like 2008, 2009, just there, like Apple oh. came with the iPhone and the App Store came. Oh. And it was sort of our lifeline. Or like the someone threw us a, what do you call it one of those uh, life-saving devices yeah. like uh, what is that is it like a boy or like I don't know how you I don't know <laughs> I don't know <laughs> write in in the comments how you yeah. pronounce that it was a lifeline yeah it was a lifeline and it was we said it's like if we don't jump on onto this we're just gonna we're gonna fall apart yeah like, it's just gonna disintegrate also I mean the Josephine games were CD-ROM games yeah like. Did so, you make a DS game as well? Um, no, we didn't. Okay. We didn't. They, actually, there were DS games made for for Josephine, but we didn't yeah. make them. Okay. Um, but the thing was that so we were making CD-ROM games for PC and Mac. Yeah. And uh, physical distribution. Physical distribution only. Yeah. And we were using Adobe Director to do it. So our tech was really old. The platform was getting really old. Like yeah. CD-ROM was like a Really? Are you still making games on CD-ROM? This is kind of, yeah. it's kind of old dish, isn't it? And then, and then also with the advent of the App Store, yeah. you know, like suddenly you could you could sort of bypass all of these steps in between with a publisher, yeah. with a distributor, with the stores, and and also it's it's unnatural for a computer game to be in. Oh, okay, sorry for everyone. I apologize to everyone who loves getting their physical copies of games. Yeah. And speaking of which, uh, Steam World Dig 2 is now out on... Everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. On, on Switch and PS4. PS4. Or yeah, in Europe and America. Yes, right. Exactly. A ton of people have already bought them. Yes, so. and we're, I'm thrilled whenever you get it because yeah. secretly I love this. I love holding yeah. a product that you've made. It's tangible. It's really... I love licking the Switch cartridge. <laughs> Tastes really Julius. funny, <laughs> but it, but it's a, it, it's actually a design feature to okay. prevent kids from like swallowing them. Oh, because it tastes so bad. Yeah. It oh, okay. so they're like going to the, spit them that out. That kind of um, icky, yucky nail polish that, that you put prevent. on the so your nails don't grow. Yeah. Oh, so right. your nails don't grow. Oh, so you so you won't so, bite your nails. Exactly. Well. It tastes kind of like that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lick it. And I think that's the official Steam League 2 taste. Okay. Well, now, there, I have two reasons not to lick it then. Because, like, the first is you say it tastes bad. The other one is that potentially you've licked all the cartridges, right? No, only, only one. Only right. one? Only yours? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hmm. So, uh, potentially someone else might have licked them. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to lick it. I'm sure you're not going to swab them. I'm not going to. DNA test. <laughs> I'm probably. not going to lick it. I'm not going to lick cartridges. Okay, that's, don't. that's not Please, what I do. You don't have to. So, anyway. Well, you made seed ROM games and no one liked it. Well, the thing was like. And, oh, the App Store. Yes, the App Store came yeah. about, right? So, it was. This is our life out of like old tech, yeah. old platforms, like old distribution methods and so on. And because, creative hell. Yes, and creative hell. Exactly. So. I, I also, I mean, it's unnatural for a computer game or like a video game to oh. to be digital. It's created digitally, then you move it into analog space. You have to yeah. go to a shop to buy it, and then you put it in your computer or gaming yeah. device, and it becomes digital again. Like it's it's designed to be digital from the beginning, right? Yeah. So I was really, I thought it's just ecologically, it was a good thing that the, that like distribution would be digital yeah because physical distribution is like at least for indies it's, it's more of a collector's item exactly i think and then it should be that i think yeah which is good yeah so we the app store came about and we said yeah. we have to make games for the app store and so we made a couple of not very great games uh, like gyro the sheepdog D gyro the sheepdog it's here it was actually pretty fun yeah well okay it's it's or good, maybe, but it's kind of hard it to wasn't. play. Yeah. The thing was, like, it took us forever to make that. Yeah, because you made 3D graphics in 2D. Yeah. So you had to write every or, or draw everything from every possible angle. Yeah, that was it. That it was, was weird. That was cumbersome. But, but, yeah. but it, it, it looks really cool. Yeah, I it, think. I think the graphic art style, obviously, it's like it's Tobias Nilsson who, who does yeah. the graphics, and he's yeah. a genius, right? The art so, director for the Steamworld games. Yeah, the art director for all the games at Image yeah. and Form, like forever, right? Yeah. He's, um, he's, um, 
he's amazing. So it's yeah. it looks good. Then we made uh, uh, Mariachi Hero. Yeah. Which is uh, which? Which was for reasons it was received uh, negatively. Yeah. But the game is actually quite fun to play. I think. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, but that was for another publisher. That's right. So we made that for. So it wasn't like Image and Form's e game. Exactly. Right. It was. It was commissioned, and yes, we were sort of instructed how to make the game. Yeah. And, um, Well, the music is really catchy. Yeah, I, I like the music. We should we should look into making that a Steam World game. I think. Yeah. <laughs> mariachi, Steam World Mariachi. Yeah, why not? You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> why not? And the bugs can be Vectron. Yeah, well, oh, uh, they could be Vectron bug bugs, right? Yeah. Bugs in Vectron. Yeah. Hmm. Sounds Why would they be okay? Okay, let's not get stuck. There. I don't know. Uh, but, so, uh, but, uh, but, uh, I'm just going to fast forward here a little bit, right? So we yeah. made those games, and then um, uh, Ole Håkansson, our uh, lead designer for Steam Dig, Steam yeah. Dig Two, and uh, Steam Heist, yeah, Steam Heist, and Steam Tower Defense, and Steam Tower Defense. That's what you're getting into. Maybe. Yes, and also this game, he came up with the idea for Until. Yeah, we were talking about. We we're talking about a game. Are like, we skipping forward a little too fast? Oh really? Are we? Tower defense is. Oh yes, you're right. Of course. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I really don't mean to to make it into parentheses because we had so we had put out Gyro the Sheepdog on on yeah. iOS and we were commissioned to make Mariachi Hero on iOS and then at the same time we had hired a guy called Ulle Håkansson because he had Nintendo DS experience. Oh, okay. That was the reason. Uh, Uh, that was the main reason we were actually looking for a Nintendo DS developer, okay. Because uh, the publisher for the Josephine games, they were thinking about moving into uh, handheld game. Yes, exactly, putting the games out on Nintendo DS. That didn't pan out with that publisher. So I s suddenly we sit here with the the most amazingly clever guy, like on the smartest guy on the planet, with no clear cut goal what what to make. Yeah. So we wrapped up all the Josephine games for CD-ROM, and then he started prototyping uh, a tower defense game for Nintendo DS. For Nintendo DSi, actually, uh -huh. because the Nintendo DSi had come out, and we said, "Okay, this is really interesting." With an online store. That's right, with an online store, and that was the big thing, that suddenly Nintendo had a uh, had a platform where we could sort of bypass all of this, I go with your hat and hand to a publisher. It with the Wii. We were. That's true, of course. But didn't that come at around the same time? I'm not sure. I think We Were is a bit older. Yeah, a bit older. But I don't know. Okay. So here, uh, down here, yeah. is the actual fact. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> anyway, you you didn't have We Dead Kids. No, we didn't, and we knew nobody at Nintendo, right? Yeah. So we somehow we we must have emailed or just applied to get a dev kit for for uh, Steam World Tower Defense. Yeah. Because there were no, and we, we sort of uh, justified it by saying that there are no tower defense games on, uh, on on the Nintendo DSi until Bloons. <laughs> Or did the Bloons tower defense game? Count? There were some. There were actually. So we started making it, and yeah. we made it in record time. I mean, Steam World Tower Defense was developed in three months. Three months or something yeah. like that, and we put it out on the DSiWare store, and. In those, th I kid you not, in those three months, like uh, three three other tower defense games, made it onto the <laughs> onto the DSI yeah. store. It was like I remember a few really big tower defense flash games right around the same time. Yeah, so maybe that was why it was a big thing back the, then. Yeah, tower defense games was really popular. They were really popular. There were some really great games. I mean, Bloons came. Yeah. I'm I'm not a fan of Blooms because I think it's very simple somehow. Like the graphics are very simple and so on. But there's another game, an excellent iOS game called Field Runners. Have oh, you played it? No. It's. Oh. Is it still available? Uh, it's still available. I still have it. Um, okay. I fired it up the other day actually for for another reason. But okay. um, it's yeah, it's great. I mean, I, I cool. Tower Defense is cool, and uh, yeah. so so we made Steam World Tower Defense, and that. We put it out, and we had we self-published it, but we had no idea. We had we had no press contacts at all. We had we didn't have one email address to oh. to anyone, and and also we released it. <clears throat> the release date was set to July 5th, which was when all of us were on vacation anyway. 
So we did nothing. But surprisingly, you know, that game came out. It, it must have been because there were so few games overall on the DSiWare store. Um, so um, that, that game very quickly paid for itself. We got a nice review at, on IGN, gave it an 8 out of 10. Oh yeah. That must have boosted it somehow because the DSiWare store was impossible. I mean, you couldn't find yeah, yeah. like the only the best way to to sell games was to name your game A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A and so we made Steamworld Tower Defense, and, and then you made another Tower Defense game, ish. Kind yeah, of. kind of. Yeah, until you're thinking yeah. of until, right? Yeah. Well, until is more like castle defense, right? So it's like yeah, a, yeah. It's a real-time strategy castle defense line drawing uh, game. Yeah. And it's massively awesome. I think until is whenever I pick up until, I, I think hours just fly by. It's out on iOS, right? It, yeah, it's an iOS game. It's out on I yeah. iOS, and uh, it's. That was that was sort of like the first, um, maybe the very first sort of milestone for uh, critics-wise was yeah, when okay. we got the eight eight out of ten for Steam World Tower Defense. Yeah. But Apple picked uh, Until to be iPad Game of the Week oh. when it came out, and we had, since we knew nobody outside of Gothenburg, Sweden, we didn't know if it was a feature that was global or only local. Or like okay. if it was for Europe. Okay. And um, later on, I found out that it was it was actually it was a European feature. Okay. Where like we could have wished for like a global feature, like uh, getting it uh, yeah. uh, featured in in the US. But maybe that so. was good enough at the time. It was massively good enough. Yeah. And uh, and I was really dumb because I had, we'd worked so hard on that game, and I'd promised my wife that I would go to Paris with her. Like once we were. Until. The game came out, yeah, once Until came out in 2011. And so we went to Paris, and then we got this feature. And I'm sitting in Paris, like, looking at the Eiffel Tower when, when I knew that I was, I really needed to be talking we're to a journalist. to be working. Yes, it was. And so <sighs> by the time I got on the plane, I was in the airport in Paris going back. And the, the sales curve had already started to decline. Oh. <laughs> it's like, no! <laughs> so. So like on iOS, like 72 hours of fame, and then it was gone. But it was a that was a huge milestone. That a huge boost. Like yeah, the long term must have boost. been. Oh, it's it's st it's still sung today. It's yeah. worth. That game is doing fine. It's yeah. it's paid for itself. Multiple times. Many 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 times over. That's cool. It's very cool. So, but what it really meant was that with until. Suddenly, we knew something that we never knew before: that mm -hmm. that image and form actually had real potential to make really great games. Yeah, yeah. So after the, after Antil, we we prototyped a lot of different things. Yeah, and and then we got with the goal to self-publish again, yeah, like a bigger we, game. Yeah, exactly. But already then, you know, like 2011, like uh, early 2012. The tide was turning. Like uh, iOS, the App Store was going from paid, yeah. sort of switching over to free to play. Yeah, and it was we were feeling it. That you weren't interested in free to play, right? We were. We just didn't understand it. You know, it's okay. like um, at like the first thing. It was also that the the first games that came out free to play were. Um, they were so greedy. Like you remember the, yeah. the Smurfberry uh, incident? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Who was that? Was it Konami who, that put out a Smurf game? I think. No idea. Uh, and but I, rem I remember reading about it in the newspapers. Yeah. Some kid like used some kids like uh, families yeah. like yeah. multiple families were oh, yeah. contacting Apple saying it's like, listen, our kid just bought thousands and, and thousands of dollars worth of these Smurf berries, <laughs> and the game was really designed like for that. It's like for kids. Yeah. Too. Yeah. It's like start the game. Uh, it's like hi, click here and buy it. And yeah. then after that, Apple sort of they enforced this, um, like like new policies. Yeah, new policies in that order you to prevent that. Yes, yeah. exactly. So we had to. Uh, so we didn't understand like how to design our games, the that the games that we wanted to make. So how can around we? That. Yeah, how can we even make it around this free-to-play concept? Okay. And 
also internally we didn't want to make it it was um, this is it's not sour grapes it's like yeah. I, I <clears throat> if someone makes a great free-to-play games and makes money somehow from that great game yeah you're you're fantastic it's like if you do that that's yeah. that's that's wizardry I think mm -hmm. that's it's great stuff um, but in the beginning it was all very it was just greed like, yeah that's how it felt um, I can see that yeah so um, so we and plus we didn't understand it there were so many new mm -hmm. acronyms right like yeah like daily average per user and blah 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 and then yeah, this is how you buy ads and it's like we sat there's like no this we don't want we don't want to we don't know how to do it and we don't want to do it it's like why should yeah. we do it so you look for different so, approaches yes right? it's like and and we felt that okay if if the app store is sort of gearing towards free to play and there everyone is make like if you put it in perspective this is like early 2000 this 2012 early 2013 yeah. every game uh, studio in Sweden were they were only talking about mobile even okay. like the bigger ones they were talking about how they were going to bring their games to mobile uh -huh, yeah that was like you know like it's hard to it's hard to remember this now but like at that time there were a lot of like people in the know who were actually just ruling out consoles at that time saying that oh, consoles yeah. are going to disappear there's no reason for us to play on consoles like we we will play on our phones and we'll hook our phones up to the TV and play that way or like our pads and stuff yeah. it's like consoles are dead PC gaming is is it's history it's all going to be mo mobile yeah. I'm, I'm not slamming this it's like it was really easy to believe that yeah. at the time so I was at a at, at, an, at like a an executive uh, meeting like where executives from all of Sweden's game studios yeah. were getting together and we had already decided at Image and Form that we were going we we're not going to make our next game for for iOS. Yeah. We were going to make it for Nintendo 3DS. Like it was in the new it was a new platform from from Nintendo. Yeah. And the eShop was still fairly new because it wasn't out in 2011 if I remember. Correctly. You're right, you're right. It's yeah. Or not we a need, launch, at least. No, exactly. We need to check our dates, probably. Yeah. But uh, yeah. But around that time, it was no one was even talking about yeah, it. Yeah, it's like, and I was sitting in that room, just thinking, it's like, am I the only one in this room that has decided that we're not going to make mobile games, like, or, or, or go down only that path? Yeah. And everyone's everyone's back slapping each other. It's like, oh, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be fantastic. And then one brave Danish game developer raised his hand and said, "Yeah, it's like I'm I'm happy to be at this meeting today, but since everyone knows everything about mobile gaming, could you please explain it to me? Because we've we're putting out game after game on mobile, and we're not making a cent from those games. Okay. So what are you guys doing? And then it was like, it was like uh, pulling the bottom out of a bucket. Like everyone's yeah. like. Yeah, I know what you're saying, man. It's so like no, uh, one's, no yeah, one was making money. No one was really succeeding, you know. It's like <laughs> maybe someone was, you know, or like yeah. two of them, but th all of them were trying, and no one was making money. Okay. So, um, so uh, that was what made you like. Did it make you conf confident? Yeah. In 3ds. Yeah. No, it, not in 3ds because like or the consoles. jury was, the it made me at least sort of Swedishly happy if I can, because Swedes we're really. Uh, um, as long as no one else is doing fine, you're doing fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the worst kind of... Is it schadenfreude, they, they say, in, even in English? I don't know. Yeah. So it's... I'm, I'm joking about it, but it all... It made... It at least made me confident in this. Is like, okay, we're not wrong in leaving mobile. Yeah. Like, not everyone is, is confident about this. Or at least not focusing only on that. Exactly, right. Maybe if we have a game in the future, we could bring it to mobile. That like Steam World Heist? Steam World Heist. It worked really well. Yes, re really well. Where Dig uh, would it <clears throat> really work. No, Steam World Dig and Steam World Dig 2, they're just too um, too input he input heavy. It's like yeah, there are too, like so many buttons. It, like I'm sure it could work with touch controls, but it would be a watered down version. It wouldn't Super be... Super watered down, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. It's... We've... We've talked about it so many times. And yeah, and if people it, are requesting it. Like we could release it with controller support, but not that many people have access to that's the a thing, Bluetooth right? controller. Yeah, right. It's it's one of those things, right? As you, when Apple, I mean, we're side we're we're sidetracking here a yep. little bit, but like if if with the Apple TV there was like a decent controller, 
Yeah. You know, it's it could be a really interesting concept. Again, yeah. it's like a small portion of all the mobile uh, users, yeah. but but still, you know, it's like I think that would be a step towards real gaming at yeah. least. Who knows what's what comes in yeah. the future? Sorry for using the term real gaming. All gaming is real gaming. Yeah, but, but uh, a, a traditional traditional gaming. controller based yes, gaming. Yes, that's what that's what yeah. I mean. Yeah. So so then yeah. so now we are like early 2013. And you're spring 2013. You're making dig. We're making Steamworld dig. Yeah. And Steamworld dig is. Um, it wasn't it, fun at the time. It right? was. It was uh, when when we played it. It wasn't fun, and the there was a. Or when we're for a long time when we we're making it, it wasn't fun. Like up until that point, even like um, mid spring 2013, it came out in August 2013. Yeah, so it was right before launch. Yeah, like a few months before, it wasn't fun. And the reason was that we were sort of nerfing the game a little bit. We we were dreading that people would. What would happen if people just dig straight down to the bottom? Oh. And then the game is over. It's like mm -hmm. the game would be finished in in you could finish the game. We thought like in like, fifteen minutes or something like that. If you the just world record dig, dig, is dig, like dig, what, dig. twenty-two minutes <laughs> yeah. or something. Yeah, but I, I'm not. But counting. it takes some effort. It yeah, takes exactly. Effort. It, it would take me like it takes me three hours to to finish Steam Will Dig, right? Yeah. And and uh, yeah, three hours around, and. Uh, and that's that's going like from nine hours, eight hours, seven hours, six hours, etc. Like yeah. I'm down to three hours for for the original. And the world record is 22 minutes or something like that. Uh, yeah, something. Yeah, but that's speedrunners. I meant like everyone who's playing yeah. the game. How? What is stopping the player from just digging straight down to the bottom, okay. defeating the boss, and it's is game that over? How like different upgrades and different materials came into place? Exactly. So that's that's when uh, again Ole Hokanson, uh, the lead designer, he sort of said, "Okay, we're not going to do any. We're we're just going to have like a design week where we're going to come up with yeah. better design to this game because we we were we had a thing that we mm. called." We didn't have the the wall jump at the time. Okay. And the reason is because if we had the wall jump, then you could actually dig straight down, pick up some resources, jump back up, and then dig straight down, or just fall down the same shaft, keep yeah, digging, yeah, and so on. Yeah. But uh, but then when we came out after that week, um, so what you had to do at that time, you had to sort of zigzag your way down. Okay. To be able to get back up again, it was it's useless really. It's like and yeah. But we didn't know how to beat it, and then. After that week, those the mm -hmm. the the like the designers came out really confident. It's like okay. So what happened? They had they said okay, you are going to be able to dig straight down if that's what you want to do. But we're gonna have side missions in the form of caves where you go in yeah. and pick up stuff like extra um, equipment, etc. And and you'll also need your extra extra equipment because the the soil, the ground, is going to be, it's Harder. going to get tougher and tougher, yeah. which makes sense, right? So that's how it became kind of, kind of like a Metroid game. That's exactly it. Yeah. Before that, it wasn't a Metroidvania, it was like a, it was a digging game, like a digging platform. Could you even jump? You could jump, but just like one tile, you'd, you'd have to like, sort of do a, like a double jump like that to get back up oh, on a okay. platform. So you, if you dig like, dug uh, two tiles down, it's like, yeah, you're screwed, you couldn't get back okay. up. <laughs> so, um, so w then it became a Metroidvania game, mm. and just you should have. I mean, I wish everyone was there to see what the team did in like the, those yeah. s in those scant months. They're like two months or three months after that. It was it was transformed massive. the entire game. Yeah, transformed the entire game. Like they had the balls to do it. Yeah, like to 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 say that okay. The game isn't good enough the way it is. Hmm. We're gonna revamp it, and it came out. That's awesome. An awesome game, and Steam will game Steam will dig came out August 2013, and we it was it was another milestone because the, suddenly Image and Four was on the map. It's like who Nintendo featured it in the Nintendo Direct. The that's very right. Same day, right. Yeah, they, <clears throat> they they put it. They featured it like a whole minute of video, like in a Nintendo Direct, yeah. the same day it came out. So this game came out of nowhere. Like again, I I was just learning how to to talk to journalists, and I had people, other developers were really kind to me and and help you. Yeah, they shared their lists of of journalists. Oh, that's like awesome. Yeah, where where I could actually reach out to 
the right people, like yeah. we're going to talk about an Nintendo. Because Image Informer was very small at the time. Now, now it's like what twenty five people. Yeah, ish. Yeah, that t when we started making Steam will Dig, we were we started making it. I think we were six people at that time. At the end, the end of it, I Seven, think eight. we were eight. Yeah, eight or nine, maybe. Yeah. We yeah, something like that, and it was um, it was fantastic. And also, it wasn't like the the seventy two hours of Antil. No. It was like a prolonged thing, like where it just kept kept sort of. It was someone someone dubbed it a sleeper hit, a game that yeah. would just pop up every now and then. Ah. And we're still selling copies every day of of and Steam. And 3ds is like the number one platform. Yeah, 3ds is is by definitely. Far. It's definitely the, the biggest platform. Yeah. Um, in terms of units, since we did a, a, a PlayStation Plus deal, um, there are yeah. more PlayStation but like, players. Like yeah, but sold sales. units. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely the 3DS. Um, yeah. um, we've sold quite a few copies on Steam as well, and yeah. also on PlayStation, yeah. um, and also sold a few copies on, on Xbox. It's not bad, you know. It's and Wii like U. The Wii U. It's, uh, it was quite good. Yeah, it was right. quite good. It w because the game was. Uh, like I, I remember the promotions we ran for it. Yeah. Like we really like focused in on that. This is the ultimate platform for the game. That's or something right. Like that. Yeah. Came a year uh, later to the Wii U yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But like with with a nice UI yeah. refresher and stuff like that. It, yeah. it was a really good version. I yeah, think. you're right. I mean, the Wii U version of uh, of Steam will dig is really worth playing. Yeah, I, I like. I personally think it's my favorite. Yeah. Um, Steel Heist is also really good for the Wii U, yeah, actually. Yeah, like, like just having the touch screen. Yeah. I, I miss that, even though I I understand why the Switch outperforms the Wii U in yeah. terms of sale. Yeah. It's, it's having a, that extra screen is really good. Yeah. I it's like cool. It. It's cool. It really is. Um, so, so that's maybe dig, we'll right? See it yeah. Return yeah. Someday. The Wii U, yeah. Uh, not the Wii U, but like uh, the two okay. screen concept. Oh, I see what you're saying. Eight screen, I don't know, <laughs> something. <laughs> but, well, uh, yeah. But, and the rest is kind of history, right? Yeah, well, after that, I mean, the interesting thing after Steam Will Dig was that we immediately sat down to prototype uh, new games, other games. Yeah, uh, multiple not, games. Yeah, multiple games and non Steam World games, uh, not necessarily Steam World games, because we had no idea. When we were done with Steam World Dig, we had no idea that it was going to. We knew it was decent, but we had been so close to the screen oh, yeah. for so long. We didn't know like if it was if it was bad, mediocre, good, or great. But with, in hindsight, I can sort of see it. It's sort yeah. of, it is a really tasty game. But yeah, so we started. Obviously. Yeah, well, it's it's doing quite all right. So we prototyped multiple different games, and none of them really took off. You ran with no, you ran with no ideas, right? Um, that's right. It, we we sat there and it's like no, no or uh, or let's put it this way: none of those games are out. Oh yeah, they're not out, right? Or aren't even close to. Those are, no, you're right. They're yeah. not even close to being out, right? Kind yeah. of cool game concepts lying around there, but yeah, uh, I've seen them. Yep, but they're not they're not coming out any day soon. No. <laughs> so anyway, like uh, so that's Steam will dig, and then, but then Steam will dig took off, and we and I was, I said, man, we gotta we gotta come up with a, a new game, like uh, a grand game, because. Like all of almost all of the um, Steam will dig reviews ended with I can't wait to see what the studio is up to next. Yeah. And by our standards, Steam will dig had taken a really long time to develop. It took like it was a huge game. Huge game, to yeah. Like anything you've ever made yeah, before. Yeah. Took like nine or ten months to make that game. I mean, we could make one of those edutainment games in a month and a half or something like oh, that. Oh, you could. Yeah. It was me being the lead programmer, so there was real efficiency there. Yeah. So uh, in one. What was it called? Adobe Director. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what language was that even? Oh, it, the the programming language is called Lingo. It's really cut above the rest. Like the or fact cut that I, I had else. never heard about it until I joined the Image Forum. It's, really? Yeah. It's quite telling. Right? Yeah. Well, maybe you're not, not that, that I know. Yeah. Much maybe of. not very educated. I'm not right? very educated. <laughs> but it, so like. We, we made these prototypes and then I got really antsy. I, I felt that if we now have this success, we have this only chance that yeah. our next game, oh, if it yeah. is underwhelming, um, people are going to say that, oh, okay, they're, yeah, they're a one-hit wonder, a flash-in-the-pan sort of studio. 
Uh, it's like remember when they made good games like Steam will dig and so on, and and we also didn't want to make Steam will dig too, because yeah. then it we had been sort of fenced in for so long like making. Um, these edutainment games. Yeah, like, and then two tower defense-ish games. Exactly, right? It's like, are we going to be this digging game company then? It's like, it, does that mean that the next game we make is Steam will Dig 3? It's like, can we make something completely different, but still set in Steam World? Like, can we <clears throat> can we retrofit uh, Steam World in some way that, yeah. that we can sort of make it encompass any type of gameplay? Yeah. And so... Uh, like a lot of lunch break discussions. I think the guy who came up with the idea was a guy called Jakob Wahlberg in the office. Mm -hmm. He had this idea for like an XCOM-like uh, setup, but seen from the side, right? Like yeah. a 2D game, 2D XCOM. He was playing XCOM at the time. A yeah. lot of a lot of the guys were playing XCOM. Yeah. And so, uh, like a lot of discussions sort of led to a game design document that Ole present Ole Håkansson presented to me. Yeah. Uh, first team will heist. First team will heist. Yeah. And it was this soldiers in space are going to go do this. Yeah. And I had only like there. I had two conditions for that game. There was uh, <clears throat> the first one. It had to be a Steam World game. Somehow yeah. we had to write it into the Steam World lore. Mm -hmm. Like um, it has probably has to be set in the future sometime. Yeah. Um, because now the steam driven robots they'll need to uh, be able to build spaceships and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of plausible, but not. All right. You don't have to explain it. That's okay, very good. good. Okay, right. you don't have to explain it. That's that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that uh, so it's and the other condition was that it needs to come out. This was early 2014. It needs to be come out before the end of 2014 because I 2014. Yes, I'm I'm not kidding you because I was really dead set on let's how long is our window of of opportunity. Oh, yeah. Like, Steam nice. Dig came out in like summer 2013. If our next game doesn't come out in 2014, people are going to forget about us. And so we announced Steam Heist in 2014. September? September said it was going to come out really early 2015. Spring 2015, I remember that. Yep. We even had a sticker, like, coming spring 2015. I'm sure we have that art lying around somewhere. Yeah, and if you Google it, you can probably yeah. find it yeah. on websites. And then it was late spring 2015, then it was summer 2015, summer, then it was, like, late, late summer 2015, fall, fall 2015. Late, late fall, then... Yeah. And then we had a winter. meeting in the office where we... Where some really sober people wanted to postpone it into 2016, like I, February 2016. Like, I, I think it would have worked. Yeah, probably would have worked. But uh, like, but I was just so hell bent on. It's like, no, god damn it! It's like we announced this game coming out in spring 2015. in 2015. It's like we're not, and we were running on fumes when it came to things to talk about regarding Steam of High. Yeah, because that like, what we. What I think we should have done in hindsight yeah. is we could have announced the game, mm -hmm. but we should have just like remained quiet. Yeah, shut up about it. Like, yeah, show here's some gameplay. Yeah, that's all you get for now. Yeah, it's kind of like the approach we did for Steam Big Two. Yeah, kind of ish. It, yeah, it was. It was um, yeah, it was. It was at least a lot closer to. Yeah, the reveal was a lot closer to the release. Yeah. So and we really didn't spoil much about the game either, which I think is which is good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you mean with the reveal of Steam Day Two? Yeah. Or or anything like right. We, we talked about some parts, oh, yeah. but um, like in screenshots and everything, we yeah. we left every, most of the game yeah untalked about yeah even some of the like big systems yeah. But I mean like. Steam World Heist was like, we're, we're like this really beautiful stripper that everyone wants to see strip. <laughs> but, and like in September 2014, we take off the jacket and then we dance off stage, right? Yeah. But then like for, like, until it came out in December 2015, we're sort of forced to <laughs> strip more and more, yeah. reveal more and more of this game, right? And, exactly. And, and it was probably a bad analogy, but like yeah. that's how I felt, like yeah. that we had, we had, Less and less to 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 talk yeah, about. Yeah, because we shared stuff every week. Yeah, like when we the the heist two stay. If you remember those, I remember those, and I also remember your initiative, like the Steam World Ambassador uh, challenges yeah, and all exactly. that. 
that was a big th- really popular thing too it's yeah. like uh, um, and like <clears throat> And we did a few for Dig 2, and yeah. it would be super interesting to do those in the future. I think so too, yeah. Like community driven, um, what's it called? Like content? Community like, generated content. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly, stuff like that. Um, maybe I would love to see like actually drawing designs because we were g- gonna do those for Dig 2. Yeah. But we had to wait to announce the game. Yes. And most of the stuff was already finished. Yeah. And like, I understand why people couldn't like we didn't really have time to put in a new character exactly or a new area and stuff like that right we managed to do it anyway yeah. like the hell caves in the last few weeks of development that's stuff right like, but yeah but it was like just just getting um or giving people the chance to name a character that's or, right or um what more we had a few more yeah like that was that was a huge deal a huge win <laughs> it was i mean the ambassador uh, program or challenges is yeah. they, we have no reason to to stop doing that exactly but right now we're sort of okay like going to today i mean we're sort of in limbo land because we're not talking about the next game uh, yeah. yet right so and it will be very very close yeah to release when we reveal it so <laughs> maybe we'll have to like plan some challenges well in advance i maybe. think so yeah like save we... this portion of the game yeah. or, or these portions of the game I don't know how it could be any kind of game. Yeah. God, let's let's not talk about it anymore. Right? I haven't even said that it's a Steam <laughs> game. <laughs> okay, let's not talk about it. Yeah. So because we are going to like, uh, what do you call We're it? We're gonna spill the beans. Yeah, somehow. spill the beans, right? Yeah. Uh, but um, okay. So, so that's Steam. Steam was high. Yeah, right? it came out in December 2015. Yes. Um, and to universal acclaim, right? It was on like, 3DS. Yeah, on 3DS first in December 2015, yeah. and then the other, um, um, and yeah. it was it was just so well received, right? I mean, yeah. um, <clears throat> plus it was this thing that this studio can take any game genre and just turn it into a nugget, right? Yeah. It was. Um, it, it was, it was so reassuring, also internally. But another, but uh, like the the terrible thing uh, with Steamboat Heist is that we spent almost two years making that game. Two, um, there was twenty two months, like yeah. from from beginning to end, and we were again, we were sort of like creatively uh, desperate towards the end of it. We were so tired, like the the team was so tired of working on this game. Yeah. But the game is so awesome. It's like Steam with Heist is so. I'm so proud of that game. Like yeah. I'm proud of all of our games. For maybe maybe it's maybe it's a, that I'm actually proud of them for different reasons. Yeah. But I'm so proud of Image and Form that we could do make a really great game and then with the same IP make a completely different but even better game. Yeah. And, and then do it again with Dig Two. Yeah, and do it again with Dig Two, right? It's yeah. so. And then do it again with our next game, <laughs> yes, right? <laughs> well, let's let's hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. Yeah. <laughs> Something. <laughs> but so, and we did things a little bit differently with Steam with Heist as well. I mean, yeah. we put out like a DLC. We hadn't haven't done yeah. that for any other game. And we. Um, we and a multi-platform release on Steam and and PlayStation, right? Yeah, came exactly. out s- same at the same time. We flubbed that, I think. Yeah, we did. It was really a um, huge lesson in like planning. Yeah, like a huge yeah. lesson in how how not to team management planning. It was all uh, kinds of managing things. managing ex- expectations. All kinds of things. It was like we it we had all kinds of problems then. It's like it was. It was pre-order in one region, and then I another am. one it wasn't, and that was it was just very difficult. Yep. And and then like late 2016, we put it out just because we could on iOS. Yeah. And and the and and it's ten bucks, right? On uh, yeah. It's a really expensive game on iOS. And but it sells well. It sells really really well. Yeah. And Apple's featuring it heavily too. That helps, of course. <clears throat> it really. I mean, obviously, yeah. it's like. Putting a game out on iOS is just as tricky as, as always, and as tricky as for any other platform. Probably yeah. tricky because there are it's so the many hardest games to get visibility on. Definitely, and then it, if you don't get Apple to lift up the game a little bit, it, it's hard. Especially a premium game. Yeah, but there's and and one guy in the office, more or less, more or less one guy, 
sort of Jarl. Jarl, Jarl Larsson took that all the way into yeah. uh, over the finishing job. line. Did a beautiful job. Yeah. Sort of terrible time for him because everyone else was sort of working on the new thing that was Steam World Dig 2. And it's like, yeah, why don't you make the iOS version of Steam World Heist? Which was sort of in our minds at the time was sort of pr a parenthesis anyway. Like we didn't expect yeah. to, to. But it became like one of the major platforms. Yeah. Like. In terms and of an, being and an image booster as well for the game, because, totally, yeah. Because it it was it wasn't underperforming, but but it did so much better than we Ex thought it would. Yeah, it, we it and it, it reached people we never thought we would reach. Exactly right? right. So that sort of makes us think about like future releases as well. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we were already working on Steam World Dig Two at that time, yeah. and we kind of we. We talked about it and just decided that it's not going to be an iOS game because yeah. it's it. We can't make the game. It, people who get that version of the game yeah. are going to say, "What is everyone talking about? This is just really cumbersome to play." Yeah. And um, and moving on to Dig Two, maybe. Yeah. So then I mean. For so long. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So. But uh, but but Dig Two, we developed <laughs> developed it for. The NX, as it was called, yes, back then. that's right. We've done a few videos on that. Yeah, we have, and we, um, we, I mean, we've always maintained that we were among the first developers to get a dev kit. Yeah, and we we got it and didn't know what it was. <laughs> it was it was yeah. We couldn't talk about it in the office. It yeah. was it was an awesome I'm not sure thing. We still can talk about it. Um, we can say yeah. that we had one. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, because that's we're right. done. Yeah, done we're done. So, and the videos are still up, so yeah. it must be okay. Yeah, but I, I, I doubt that we're gonna like post footage of the NX. No, of stuff, course right? not. Uh, but um, we were making like the, that was a huge thing, right? Because it, it would pretty much be not a launch game, yeah. but a launch window game. It was in my head again that like I'm, I'm. I'm optimistic to a fault. Usually, like I, I really think that we're gonna be able to, to uh, overperform. Yeah, we. I think we was. I was gonna use that word, but I actually think we always do overperform. Yeah, but <laughs> overperform even more. Or yeah, overperform over like the overperformance performance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you do the I mean. impossible. Yeah, do the impossible. Yeah. So I. I literally thought that because we got the dev kit so early, and we knew what we were going to going to make, we were going to make Steam World Dig Two. We had made it was Steam be easy. Yeah, it was going to be easy. It was going to be fast because we knew what Steam World Dig, what made Steam World Dig into such a great game. We can just emulate that, and then then we sort of, it's not like we ran into problems, but we, the the like everyone in the team wanted to make Steam World Dig Two, uh, 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 like a two to force, like because. Yeah. It, I mean, making a sequel—it's—it's it's really hard to make a sequel. What do you have? The thing you have to like in a sequel really make sure that you're not just taking stuff and and doing it doing it again. I mean, in in Steam World Dig and Steam World Dig Two, you're actually only sharing like one piece of equipment. Really, it's like the yeah. pickaxe, so two, <laughs> yeah. and the speed boots. Like you get the speed boots, and then. Yeah, it's different. Like the upgrade tree is different in Steam World Dig Two. Yeah, yeah. From from Dig One. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It, it's bigger and, and just so much more complicated. Yeah. In a ton of ways. Yeah, and and much more clever and much yeah. more dynamic and, and much like, more fun. Much more fun. And and I really wanted Steam World Dig Two to be a launch title. That would have been cool. Yeah, would have been. But awesome. like people were busy playing like. What, fast RMX and Zelda anyway, so true, true. So uh, I think September was a good, good yeah, launch date. Yeah, we we had a few ones in mind. Yeah, so but, uh, so now we are there now, like uh, like September last year when we released Steam World Dig Two, yeah. and it's really Steam World Dig Two is superseded uh, Steam World Heist. So now Steam World Dig Two is the best game like ever put out by by Image and Form, according to yeah. Metacritic. So it. It depends on which platform you're looking at. Uh, I don't okay. want to break your bubble, but <laughs> <laughs> I think if you if you average everything, like oh maybe not. It's like uh, maybe I, again I don't know. Now okay, let's put it like this then. It's it's your, like, is it your favorite game? Steel Dig Two. Yeah. Um, Antil is my favorite game. I think Antil is fantastic. Yeah. Okay, but 
but Steam World Dig 2 is definitely like my favorite Steam World game, if, uh, yeah. if you want to put it that way. That's and cool. I should say also that Steam World Dig 2 on the launch platform, yeah. because like on Metacritic, you will when you put it out on a new platform, you'll get like for the first platform, you'll get like hopefully a lot of reviews, uh -huh. and then when you put it out on the next platform, you're gonna get like a, a much lower number. Yeah. So it's probably you get like a much better much better, much more realistic average like for the release platform. So yeah. that way Steam World Dig 2 is actually the best game that we've made. So I think Steam World Dig okay. 1 is is 82 out of 100 on Metacritic. Yeah. Uh, Steam World Heist is 85 or 86 and uh, Steam World Dig 2 is 88 out of, uh, okay. out of 100. That's cool. 88 out of 100. There aren't that many games for the, for the Switch that, that come up to that mm, level. And especially not at the time. Not at the time, exactly. Yeah, we're I still mean, in the top 10 on Metacritic, I, I think. think. Yeah, I think for people who are counting, which I am, totally. Of course you are. <laughs> but yeah, but That was also a big lesson for you, right? What? Actually, like, doing the math with the sales yeah. and tracking sales yes. and stuff like that. Yeah. Because we were just guessing yeah. up until very recently, yeah. right? Yeah, and also, I mean, it feels like in terms of milestones, I'm just going to take that first yeah. and then I'm going to go back to sales. In terms of milestones, we have already, it was very obvious when we had that pizza and beer evening, when we're sort of waiting for the, the review scores oh, to yeah, come yeah, in. Yeah. So I know that from one major site, we got a 9 out of 10 and people were booing in the office. Do you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, and it's scrolling down to the bottom, it's like, 9, boo! <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing, but it, it's no. a fun thing. It's a fun memory. Let's put it. Yeah. I wasn't laughing People at were it. Sar sarcastic. Yeah, they were. They were booing, booing ironically, right? Yeah. We. How do you, I mean? How do you beat a nine out of ten? Yes, with a ten out of ten. But how many games get Sh that? Yeah, and how many games should have a ten out of ten? Like Breath of the Wild, I think. Yes. It probably deserves it. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe Mario Odyssey. Like. Yeah. Not my type of game, but it's. But even like, those games can be improved. Improve, yeah, right? but they're, but they're just so they can they can certainly yeah. be improved, right? But they're just so good, right? Yeah, they 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 have that extra special something that that it it's it's hard it's hard to know what makes a game, like a nine out of ten a ten yeah. out of ten, right? Like I don't know if Dig would have been a ten out of ten if it was twice as long and had double the content. No, you're right. Maybe for the, maybe if it was still. I think the prize yeah. uh, decides that as well. Yes, like, it does. Right. Because I, I don't think it's like, it's, it, to me at least, scores are a way to measure the value, yeah. not the, not necessarily the gameplay quality. I see what you're saying. So like if a, if, a game is, if, is, if a game is one buck, yeah. then the value is, or it yeah, should but, have but, a high but, score? But like, um, there, are, there are eight, at, like, take um, Dig 1, Tower Defense, Dig 2, and Heist. Yep. Each of those have a number of 8 out of 10 reviews, or yep. Tower right. Defense has one. Yep. But it, but I, w I would definitely say that the other games who still got an 8 out of 10 yep. is are better. Right, yes. Oh, yes, certainly. Because, now because, I know what you mean. Because yeah. Tower Defense was like one, or is five five bucks? Yeah, it's still, it's always been five bucks, yeah. Yeah. For And it's a Tower Defense game that is quite simple, right? So. Yeah. Uh, and Dig is 10. 10. Heist was 20, then down to 15. Right. And now the Ultimate Edition, with all DLC included, though, is 20. On the Switch is 20, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And Dig 2 is 20. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like, if, I, if you spend $40 mm -hmm. on Dig 2, would it still be like a 9 out of 10? Very good. Yeah, that's a really good uh, <clears throat> observation. Like, yeah. or, or, or if we just do it extreme, like yeah. if it was $60, like, yeah. would it be a, a 9 out of 10 game? It's Maybe. Like, yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, we haven't, we haven't put out a game like okay, that. Okay, so let's just raise the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's well, raise the price. That's very in an interesting discussion. And maybe you have some, like, Input? what do you think? Yeah. yeah. Write it down below. Like, this is really, in it's really interesting. It's good for us yeah. to know as well.
Um, so here we are today, right? It's like Steam Will Dig 2 is, is the best, objectively, it's the best thing that we've made, right? Yeah, because you won the Nordic Game Award. That's right. So that's where we started. And yeah. finally... Because you, you were nominated for Dig. We were, nomi we were nominated for Antil, we were nominated for Dig, we were nominated for Heist, now for Dig 2. It, for Heist, we were nominated in three categories, you know? Oh. And I, I sat there and it's like, okay, we're going to pick up one of these. Like, yeah. we're... We're, it's likely because the game is so good, and I really think the jury did a poor job. <laughs> like <laughs> in 2016, when the, the when the when heist was sort of on the chopping block, and then now I think we picked up what we should have picked up, which was one of the two heavyweight categories. It was like overall best game, and it was like handheld slash small screen uh, yeah. best game. The other ones were like you know. The graphic design, uh, design. Game, game design, or sound effects or audio. Uh, I don't know about that yeah, one. Yeah, but, of course. Right. But, but minor or not as cool category. No, exactly. For, I mean, yeah, according to us. Yes. It depends on what game you're making. If you're making a music game, the best music is of course, of course, a good thing. Yeah. As a, one one way to measure it is like we won the category that was presented next to last. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So not weird. game of the year. But the best small screen. Yes, of the year. best handheld or small screen. So it's like the best handheld or, or mobile game of the year. Yeah, and that's sort of that's how I view Steam Will Dig 2. It's a Switch game. Yeah, and also like back to the tracking the sales. I mean, Steam Will Dig yeah. 2 as the launch of Steam Will Dig 2 outperformed everything. Everything, everything easily, else. even iOS. Yeah, it's super easily. It it sort of blew everything out of the water. It was. Yeah. Um, it, it transformed image and form, I should say, from yeah. from not a hand to mouth uh, existence, but close to it. Like before Steam Will Dig 2, maybe we had, you know, we, at every given point, like at, at the best of times, we would have like three or four months worth of expenses yeah. in the bank. Um, it's not like that anymore. But now we have, we have five. Now we have five months. <laughs> That's perfect. But, but I guess, like, why the Nordic? Getting, like, why? Why we, is, we, yeah. I don't think we can wrap this up in a neat way because, like, like what I, from my perspective is that you like the Nordic Game Award so much yeah. because you didn't win it the last few times and now you're finally getting recognition at home. Yeah, is it kind of like that? Well, it's like you know, it's it's a Swedish uh, expression. I, there must be something like. Uh, but uh, I equivalent in English, it's like we say nobody becomes a prophet in his native country, right? Ah, oh, yeah. Uh, like to be to be acknowledged by your peers is what life is about, right? Yeah, it truly really is. And oh, this is getting deep. Yeah, it's getting really deep. But it was just it's it's so it's a mix, right? I w I've been sitting through these award shows yeah. patiently, like. <clears throat> just knowing or like sitting hoping like that please please because it would mean so much to me like if yeah. we if we win this like if the the Nordic game community recognizes, uh, recognizes that image, and image form. form is what because the rest of the world are talking about steam world yeah like uh, the in in really reverent tones like uh, yeah. Famitsu in in Japan which yeah. is like the Maybe Even it's Nintendo the, Japan. <clears throat> Nintendo of Japan, but like if you're talking about like Journalist. review uh, inst or institutions, like yeah. Famitsu is it's dead serious. Yeah. And Famitsu gives Steam Will Dig Two such a high score that they have to send us a bottle of champagne and a gold medal. Oh, yeah. I can get your pictures of that. Yeah, it's coming here. So, uh, well, uh, we drank the champagne, didn't we? No, we didn't. Oh, we didn't. It's oh, oh, of course we did. <laughs> it was delicious. Arigato gozaimasu. <laughs> but, but uh, so, so there's like milestone upon milestone like of international recognition for image and form. But still, you sit through uh, like Nordic game and and you don't win, right? And it's it's like because there are so many good games from this region. There it, it, is it tough. Yes, there are so many and, good and games. We have like our head in our bubble. Yes, or, yes. In in it, the Nintendo bubble, if you want to call it that. Yeah, I mean, even that. Because like Nintendo of Japan, like Nintendo Minute, like they they chose the choose the best games that come out yeah. for the Switch. They highlight uh, Steam will dig too. Yeah, and uh, they are our peers in many ways. So, they're, yeah, so, they're so separate. Long, but, yeah, exactly. But the Nordic Award is kind of like 
it's some a sort of recognition that is universal but local if you know what I mean well it's like getting deep again but it's like yeah. almost like having your parents notice or like like uh, pat you on the on the yeah. shoulder for so, for doing well right? good job yeah good job you did well in school here's your recognition for it right yeah um, well, because Nintendo Japan is, they they made a poll around uh, among Japanese players, like yeah. what game are you recommending to your friends? And it's, yeah. it was it was uh, Breath of the Wild, it was Mario Odyssey, and it was Steam Dig Two in that Third order. Place. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, come on, it's like give me that price sometime. <laughs> <laughs> you were getting impatient. <laughs> no, it was that's, really impatient. That's what it was all about. You were just impatient. impatient. Yeah, yeah, but because it, there was there has been so much su su success, right? And I'm. I don't want to sound greedy, but it was really important to get the Nordic Game Award. Yeah, it's, it's like it would be more important than getting like a BAFTA award for me, like uh, because I have no relation to that. Yeah. I've been I've been going to the Nordic Game Conference like for so many years, like while we were making these edutainment games, like it's like wishing oh you're, you could be on yeah stage. wishing wishing yeah, like this guy who's like it's not like that anymore, but it's like I always in the beginning I felt like. There's this cluster of people talking and they're joking about something, and there's this guy standing wanting to be a part of the of, of the, the club of the club of the cool guys. And it's yeah. like, what are you guys laughing about? It's like, yeah, are you having a party? <laughs> that's that's. And you didn't want to be that guy anymore. N well, it, it like literally, it wasn't like that. No, <laughs> it's it, like it wasn't. But like, but but yes, it's like, come on, guys, we make some of the best games on the planet. Can we? Can you please pat us on the back for that? Not on the head, but on the back. Yeah, like, yeah. So it was really important. It's yeah. yeah. It's very, you know. It might be childish, but it's uh, it was important. But we make games. Yeah, we it make isn't games. child's play, but but yeah. It's 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 like I, I guess I'm just overly competitive too. It's like yeah. uh, I I want to win. I want to make. I want to be in the studio that makes the best games on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> I or or rather, I want. M I want our studio to make the best games on the planet. I don't want to go to a studio that makes the best ones. So if in the form suddenly dips, you're like, so long, okay, bye, bye. <laughs> no, well, that's, no. The, that's the thing, right? It's like, it's no. part of like com being competitive, well, I, I, I think. I, I think no one would question your like loyalty to Image and Form. No, that's not going to go away. It's like You made like, what, PowerPoint presentations for Image and Form? Yeah, 20 years ago I did, yeah. yeah. But, Better than PowerPoint, it was uh, it was director presentation. I think that's a good place to like wrap things up. Should we wrap it up? Yeah, right. yeah. I don't I don't even know how long we've been sitting here for. Like an hour an hour, hour and a half maybe. Yeah. Let's not edit this today this time, right? It's yeah. like let's just run this. That part about the stripper though. Yeah, oh, that's fine. Yeah, they're if you're they're, fine with they're it. grown ups. It's just an analogy. It's a bad analogy. They might be and I'm grown full ups. Of that. Uh, yeah. Okay. So. Um, yeah, ask your parents if you're allowed to see this. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, man. It's been yeah. a great talk it's to you, as a, always. Yeah, same to you. Um, yeah, so this is the complete history of Image and Form and That's why it, yeah. the Nordic Game Award is, is so, so goddamn important. Yeah, so goddamn important. Yeah. That's it. Um, we should, like, the title we had planned for this was The History of Image and Form, but I think it's going to be The Complete History. Image and form. Oh, but that's wonderful. That yeah. sounds great. Of course, it isn't the complete, but as as close as anyone's ever gotten. Yeah, right? that's right. Well, thank you, Julius. Yeah. Thank you very much thank for tuning you, in, Brian. and uh, we'll be back soon, right? Yeah. See you next time. Bye bye. Cheers. And that's not edited one time.